My name is Doug Adams and I'm Chair of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Vanderbilt University and what I'd like to do is tell you about why you might want to choose to come to graduate school here or to come be an undergraduate student with us at Vanderbilt. With 9 billion people that we're going to have on the planet over the next 30 years, this is an extremely important uh, way in which to think about what we do as engineers. So let me start talking about the questions we'd like to answer about energy and whether there'll be enough energy uh, that we can supply all these people with the electricity they need uh, in their daily lives. Uh, clean water. Uh, will people have enough clean water to, to do the kinds of sanitation work they need to do, the agricultural needs that they have with water? Uh, transportation. You know, will transportation systems be reliable enough and safe enough uh, for all those people that we need to serve? And I think that kind of the commonalities in all these questions are the interactions between the natural world and the built world. Uh, so the systems we build so that people have the energy they need, but in a way that doesn't impact the environment uh, in a negative manner. So take hydroelectric power plants. Uh, so hydroelectric power plants are very interesting. They're very large structures. Uh, they involve large dam structures. They involve large machinery. And so clearly there's an aspect of engineering around designing those systems, but there's also an aspect of how you design those systems to protect the environment so that the water resources and contamination that might uh, influence our water quality is also taken into account. So it's really that interaction between the built environment and the natural environment where we focus in civil and environmental engineering. We have programs that have a huge impact uh, on society. Programs like uh, the CREST program, the Consortium for Risk Evaluation with Stakeholder Participation. CRESP works on issues surrounding nuclear waste containment. So all the low-level nuclear waste that was generated as a part of the nuclear weapons program in this country, but also the high-level waste that's generated as a consequence of nuclear power, how is it that we're going to store that for the decades uh, that we need to in a, in a manner that's safe and reliable? So CRESP is helping to advise the federal government about their policies and their approaches for uh, waste, nuclear waste containment. We also have groups, for instance, looking at how water and energy and our needs for both of those things interact with one another uh, as part of what's called the Vanderbilt Institute for Energy and Environment. So our faculty members work on issues related to, for instance, uh, drought uh, calculations, understanding how uh, uh, farmers are going to address issues around drought re relative to, say, extreme weather event events, hurricanes and, and other types of uh, uh, disasters such as that. And, and finally, we also have groups that work on risk and reliability. So understanding how to maintain fleets of aircraft that we might fly in in our daily lives uh, and also understand how to uh, calculate, for instance, the reliability of our transportation routes, our multimodal transportation routes where we might be on a plane one minute and then a bus the next minute and understanding how those modes of transportation interact with each other using geospatial uh, information systems. So our researchers are, are, are studying and solving these very big uh, problems related to energy and security and transportation systems. And one of the things that makes our department and the faculty really unique in their research is that they study things at the very fundamental level, but they also step back and they see the forest through the trees. They see the impacts of their work on society. They will study the multi-scale behavior of materials by uh, really looking in detail at the microstructure of the materials, uh, but they will also step back and understand, well, how do you design uh, uh, infrastructure that is resistant to extreme events like blast loading, for instance. How do you design buildings that can withstand a blast? And so they look, at, they look at the problem from both of those angles so that they can develop solutions that, that acknowledge that there are really uh, uh, sophisticated, complex, fundamental phenomena going on, but also understand the societal impact of their work. They're looking at manipulating, for instance, the chemistry of concrete using uh, nano-engineered materials so that they can prevent cracks from forming in concrete and make concrete more durable and long-lasting for, for instance, our transportation infrastructure. And so they look at these problems again at, at across multiple scales and they look at it both 
uh, at a fundamental level and in terms of how the application is going to impact society. So one of the common threads in all the work that goes on in the department is around this idea of the science and engineering of risk. It's designing systems that always perform the way we want them to perform, but in a way that's economically and environmentally sound. So again, it's important to understand the nuts and bolts, if you will, of how you design these systems, how the materials perform, but also how you do that in a way that's economical and acknowledges that we need to protect the environment uh, in which those bridges in which those aircraft operate. If you want to study some of the biggest challenges facing the country like renewable energy production and the security of next generation transportation systems, you should come to Civil and Environmental Engineering at Vanderbilt University. You'll get to do real world experiments on problems that matter.